We are going to be going over the best assassins in Brawl Stars. We have done tanks, we have done snipers, but we have not done the assassins in Brawl Stars, so here we go. First off, we have Buzz, and Buzz I rated the number one hypercharge coming out out of all of the hypercharges in the game, but unfortunately, they did give it an emergency nerf that did make it a lot worse. Now, Buzz is still a really good tank or assassin option since it does have the hypercharge, but it's not the craziest one we're going to have here, so we are going to leave it in the A tier. With that said though, it's good on a lot of different maps, a lot of different modes, and you can pop off like crazy with Buzz, so this is still a very, very good brawler. Next up, we have Cordelius, and although Cordelius's hypercharge didn't look to be like the craziest thing in the world when it came out, we learned over time that since the jump is no longer allowed in the realm, that the hypercharge which you get once every two or three realms is actually very, very useful. Just because you get someone in a realm, it doesn't really mean it's an automatic kill anymore without the jump, but when you use the hypercharge, it is basically an automatic kill. Plus, this helps out Cord out of the realm as well. Cordelius is probably the number one tank counter since tanks also get passive supercharge just by getting hit, but once you're in the dimension, Cord does not let that happen. So because of that, we're going to put Cord at the very top of the S tier for now, as it is easily the best tank counter in the game and a very good assassin. Next up, we have Crow, and we always got to bring up my boy Lex every time we talk about Crow. I'm sorry, Lex, this brawler still sucks. It needs a buff. The hypercharge buff was pretty good, and it did actually make Crow somewhat usable. I would put it at the bottom of the C tier before, but now I'm going to put it at the top of the C If I can actually grab it, I'm going to put it at the top of the C tier. Still, you know, a pretty limited brawler. You can't really play it too well on Heist unless you get that crow jump on safe, which is like 60%. So you can play it on Heist. You're just totally dependent on that one jump. Knockout and Bounty, it's also not that good. So it's kind of limited to Brawl Ball and Gem and Hot Zone, where it's still not the very top of the meta. So it's going to be a C tier brawler, but it's definitely better and it's definitely a lot more usable. So C tier for the crow. Next up, we have Daryl, and we are going to put this in the F tier. I know some of you guys might think Daryl is okay, which it is. If you guys are playing at 30,000, 20,000, or even 40,000 trophies, Daryl isn't a bad brawler. But once you start facing people, you know, who are probably a little bit better at the game than the people you're facing right now, Daryl falls off really, really fast. Anything that could stun Daryl, slow Daryl, anything just makes Daryl totally useless. Now, there are obviously good Daryl players. I'm sure Pika can do crazy stuff with Daryl but the average player just isn't going to be able to do that much. Look at the brawlers on this list that we haven't even named. All of these do really well into Daryl, and if these do well into Daryl, then the tank counters do well into Daryl. We're going to put Daryl in the F tier. Next up, we have Edgar, and Edgar's been in a really weird place as of late. Most brawlers either stay at the very top or stay near the bottom for over a year or about a year, a really long time. But Edgar has been going up and down like it is nobody's business. When Edgar first got the hypercharge, it was the top of S tier. But before Edgar got that hypercharge, it was basically the bottom of every single tier list. Then they nerfed it, it went down, and it's kind of in a weird place. I'm going to put it in the middle of the B tier for now. The reason we have it in the B tier is because it's probably a little bit more flexible than Crow. You can play it on Bounty, Knockout, Heist, Brawl Ball, probably not Hot Zone, but even Gem. You can play it on a lot of different modes, and its hypercharge is still very good. Now, with that being said, he still does kind of waddle around and is a little bit useless for majority of the game. So he is still not the greatest brawler. But when he has his super, he's really good, so we're going to put him in the B tier. Next up, we got our boy Fang, and Fang is easily one of the most fun brawlers in the game. They did kind of nerf the hypercharge, which was super fun, super annoying. I'm very happy they did it. But he is still a super, super good brawler, and we are going to put him right... Oh, I didn't mean to move Daryl. We're going to put him right beside our boy Buzz in the A tier. Similarly to Buzz, he has a very strong hypercharge, doesn't take a lot of shots to get it, only takes him four shots to get it, and he is super, super, super versatile in a bunch of different modes. He's a really good assassin, and once he gets right on top of you, similarly to Edgar, similarly to Cordelius, and similarly to Buzz, there is really not that much you can do. He also has a stun, so he can get a really good combo of like dash on you, hit you, stun, hit you again, and you take like 7.5 thousand damage and you can barely even shoot. Fang is one of the best assassins in the game. It probably will be forever one of the best assassins in the game. He is going in the A tier. Next up, we got my boy Gray, and Gray is one of the most fun brawlers team synergy-wise in the game. Once you put that little teleport down, you can just keep going back and forth, do crazy stuff with your team. My competitive team absolutely loves to play Gray. It's a bunch of fun. And once your entire team is just teleporting and doing all these types of crazy things, there's really not too much the other team can do. 
Additionally, if someone is one shot or two shot and you teleport onto them with Gray, you know you're going to get the kill and you're basically halfway to your next super so you can get another teleport. Like Gray is actually a really, really good brawler if you know what you're doing. Gray does not do a lot of damage. Its star power doesn't really affect anything to do with damage. It gives you a little bit of health or it gives you a little bit of shield. And if you miss your hooks or your first few shots, Gray really isn't that good. It is really super dependent and you have to have a good comp around it as well. So if because of that, I'm going to put it at the very top of the C tier. I think he's a little bit better than Crow, but unfortunately he just doesn't really do that damage that the rest of the assassins do. So we are going to put him in the C tier. Next up, we have Kit the Cat. And honestly, I don't have too much to say about Kit. F tier for sure. Used to be the best brawler in the game. You're welcome, Nubs, for that rank 35. But just not that good right now. It's just useless. The invis star power, I mean gadget, sorry, is actually pretty useful. And you can sneak on to like throwers with that. So that's why we are going to count Kit as an assassin. But the main part about this brawler was hopping on someone's back, being a thrower, and he's just not that good at doing that anymore. So unfortunately, F tier because he can be an assassin, but he can't really assassinate everyone with his damage, with his health, with his range. So bottom of the F tier for you, the cat. Next up, we have Leon, and Leon is at the very tippity top of the meta. He's going straight to the top of the S tier where he belongs. He's good in every mode. He probably is the best hypercharge in the game right now, and he is just an absolute menace and impossible to deal with. I really hope Leon gets a nerf soon because he really needs one. He is dominating the meta every single mode. I don't have too much to say about Leon. Broken Brawler, top of the S tier. Let's keep it moving. Next up, we have Melody, and there is an actual gameplay of Melody in the game right now, so it is a little bit hard to judge, but I have gotten to play it a little bit in the dev build, and we have seen it in some Brawl Talks and in some Brawl Stars videos, and I'm going to put Melody at the top. Oh, that is Fang. I'm going to put Melody at the top of the S tier. Well, I guess not the top of the S tier, but the S tier. When I got to test out Melody and Angelo, Melody felt a lot stronger and a lot more wild than Angelo. And Angelo is arguably the best brawler in the game. So what does that make Melody? She can literally dash around the entire map in like five seconds. She's going to be really annoying to deal with. And once good players get her down with her weird attack spinning around her with the musical notes, she is going to be unreal you guys are gonna see i'm not really excited for it let's see what happens with melody coming up next we have miko and miko is one of my favorite brawlers in the game unlike buzzer fang you're always a threat to get a kill it feels like those brawlers need to get their super because that gets them towards their opponent as where the monkey can kind of just literally jump on you it's kind of crazy the downside though with playing miko is that if you want to get a kill you need to focus 100 of your attention to getting that kill and every ammo counts so if you mess up one jump, or if you decide you want to go and kill a Leon for say, you need to use every single one of your jumps on that Leon. You need to go and get that Leon, or you're going to waste all your ammo jumping in and out, and you're going to be completely useless to the play. Additionally, the Leon's teammates can also see that, and then the game kind of turns into a two-on-two, -two, and if you time it bad, it's going to not go very well for you. There's a lot of pros and cons with Miko. I think it really depends on the player. I think I'm good at him. I think a lot of you guys could actually probably be pretty good at him because he's a pretty simple brawler. So we're going to put him in the very bottom of the B tier with Edgar. Next up, we have Mortis. And Mortis, similarly to Miko, is always a threat even when he doesn't have super. Now, when he does have his bats, he is super strong. So we're going to put him again in the B tier with Miko. I think this is a good placement for Mortis. Mortis is kind of a troll brawler. I hate when my randoms go Mortis, but it, he can be like extremely good. So we are going to put him in B, but just like Miko, it depends on the player. So just hope you're good with him. Next up, we have Sam, and we're going to put Sam in the bottom of the C tier. Sam definitely needs a buff. I think there's going to be one coming soon, or at least I hope there is, because Sam has been a little bit underwhelming for a while. The thing with Sam is, even if you're dying, if you're consistently just throwing your glove, healing, running fast, throwing your glove, healing, running fast, two people are going to have to focus you to kill you. They're going to have to use gadgets you know, their supers, everything they have, and it's going to make the game a lot easier for your teammates. You know, when the game ends, and if you go two kills, seven deaths with Sam, you're still putting in a ton of work. You don't always need to be getting kills with Sam. A lot of it is about the attention you draw, but again, he's not the greatest right now, so we're going to put him in the C tier. Next up, we have Stu, and Stu is kind of a weird assassin. He's like kind of a control brawler assassin, so it's a little bit weird that I'm putting him on this list, but I didn't want to leave anyone out, so I put him in. We're going to put Stu in the bottom of the A tier because... If you're fully countered with Stu, you're going to lose if you're facing like a spike or a dog or something like that. But anything besides that, 
And Stu is a crazy brawler. You're dashing all over the place. You have wall breaks. You have speed. You heal with your dash or you dash really far. It's really hard for your opponents to hit you. Like, Stu is just a really, really good brawler. A little bit, you know, maybe not of an assassin, but he does have some assassin traits. So we're going to put him at the very, very bottom of the A tier, but really good brawler. Very good trophy road brawler. Last up, we have Bonnie. And you guys gave me a lot of heat last time when I put Bonnie in the very bottom of my tier list. Apparently, at somewhere around 7k total trophies, or maybe if you have 100 trophies on your Bonnie and you're facing bots, she's pretty good. I'm totally sure you're pr you can win at 100 trophies, but anywhere else, Bonnie just is not good enough at all. But I'm going to listen to you guys a little bit. I'm going to move it up from the bottom tier, and I'm going to move her to the C tier, but she's not very good. She doesn't do enough damage. The little form is pretty strong on heist and when you're right on top of someone, but outside of those two situations where you're not right on top of someone or on a safe, she's pretty useless in that little form. So we're going to put her at the very bottom of the C tier. If you guys have any different opinions or think something is off, let, it, let me know in the comment section below, and I would love to see your guys' opinions. 